Many people have now recognized the emptiness in the science-based lifting movement, and that's great. A lot of people are making videos about this, the death of science-based lifting. There's a video that I made uh, recently at the time of this filming, like four or five days ago or something, and it's great to see people waking up to this, waking up to the nonsense, waking up to the over-extrapolation, but there's one problem that's kind of a thread through all these videos, my video included, and I'm sure some people um, have touched on this topic, but I wanted to talk about that problem here today and why it's really, 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 really important at this moment in social media fitness to pay attention to this problem. Okay, so what's the problem? Well, let me just go maybe like one or two steps backward for just a second. I promise I'll get there super quickly. Okay, because I know I, any of you who have watched any of these know I like to, you know, okay. So we have identified the problem generally. People are over extrapolating data, data that is limited in many ways and applying it to lifting directly as if we've discovered all the facts about lifting that there are to know. People are saying ridiculous things like, you know, I could have made Ronnie Coleman's XYZ muscle bigger with XYZ science-based met method, right? And, and, and people are kind of like, recognizing how ridiculous that is. But the problem and what is very important to pay attention to is what people are suggesting as solutions, okay? And this is something that I did not touch on, I don't really think, or at least I don't remember, in my science-based lifting is dead video, which is that the solution to the problem that we're currently experiencing in the information space is not the following. The solution is not to say that we need to now just go back to what we were doing before where no one was thinking about anything, everyone was going by feel, everyone was just getting a pump and leaving, right? The solution to bad science communication is not bro science, bro communication. The solution to bad science communication is good science communication. So now the question becomes, well, Ben, where are you getting this idea that like people are saying, you know, we need to like revert back to the olden days or like, okay, let me give you a few examples. So this one I'm gonna put on the screen. I forget the exact, <laughs> the exact wording of this one. I saw this comment on um, a Greg Doucette video. Shout out to Greg, because he mentioned me in his recent science-based lifting video, which I thought he did a good job with overall. Um, and the comment was something like, included the word horse cockery, which for those of you who don't know, uh, it comes not originally probably, but at least in terms of fitness popularity, it comes from this guy, Eric Bugenhagen, Bugenhagen, who is basic, he's like this WWE guy who makes, um, uh, in my opinion, very funny, entertaining fitness content. And he, from the very start, was kind of like anti-science-based lifting movement, but he, he wasn't like anti-science-based lifting movement in the sense that like, he just totally dismisses all information and the, and the potential value of it. But where I think his content is dangerous for people who actually care about learning this information is much of his solution to the problem of like people over extrapolating and just speaking out of their ass on these topics is to just like use words like horse cockery <laughs> and to say like, you know, we all just need to go back to like horse cocking weights, okay? which for those of you who don't know, horse cocking weights is just basically like throwing shit around, you know, like the classic Ronnie Coleman bent over row, I'm just gonna grip it and rip it type of thing. And there is absolutely value to that, but that is not mutually exclusive, just that whole concept is not mutually exclusive from actually paying, atten paying attention to, um, to empiricism, uh, from actually paying attention to the intellectual side of lifting in a way that is not this, uh, what has become this science-based lifting movement, right? You can horse cock weights whilst still valuing all of the information that is out there and uh, while still valuing people who are good science communicators and applying the information that they provide to your training. So I'm gonna give recommendations on who I would um, uh, lean into listening in just a second here, uh, recommendations and actual solutions, because I think that, again, as I mentioned, that was something that was lacking in my other video and many of the videos that I've seen is just clear recommendations. Um, but before I, I do that, I just want to show one other comment, this one a little bit more serious than the former, 
um, on that same video, which basically suggests that like, uh, and I've seen this many, many, many times, and I get many messages like this that are basically like something to the effect of, I used to try to, you know, lift optimally, and then I actually just started trying, right? That's basically the translation of this kind of comment. And so, so here's something I want to make very, very clear. Actual scientific training, if we can call it that, with, with a clear understanding of what is actually meant by scientific training, not pseudoscience-based training, which is what, what everyone is kind of moving on from, but like actual scientific training would suggest that you should train relatively close to failure, right? So if you're someone who trains to failure or close to failure in your hypertrophic programs and you're, uh, uh, to get bigger, right? Uh, you are someone who is training uh, according to the current body of evidence that suggests that, hey, we should train relatively close to failure. Okay, so those two things are actually aligned, right? Horse cockery, actually trying, aka, um, is in line with the current understanding that we have from a, an empirical perspective of what uh, optimally will grow muscle, right? Newsflash, holy shit, trying harder will probably produce more results than not trying as hard. But here's the key conflation that is occurring is people are saying, oh, I used to do this optimal training thing and then I just forgot about it and I went into the horse cockery and now I'm seeing results, okay? And what I would say is that is a very, very clear representation of the misunderstanding and, uh, and the problem that I'm trying to illustrate in this video right here, which is that people are going from a misunderstanding of science to just being anti-science overall. And the solution to bad science is not uh, uh, just ignoring science, ignoring anything that science could offer, ignoring people who are actually good science communicators. It's listening to people, following people who actually have an idea of Okay, what is the what are the what is the current body of evidence relative to a subject um, in the fitness field, be it muscle growth, strength, et cetera, whatever you're paying attention to? What are the limitations of it? In what context does it make sense to apply that information in conversation and in recommendation? Um, and then, you know, to be more specific than that, right, you're, you're basically dealing with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, right? So when people are communicating broadly, you can't make hyper specific recommendations because you don't understand exactly what context people are asking questions about, for instance, but you can speak generally about the trend of say, um, just to pick the example I referenced earlier, like training harder versus training not as hard, which to many people, they end up just saying like, oh, that's so intuitive. Why do we need to study to, okay. The, the, the purpose of science and, and the sort of goal of science is basically to make a claim, test a claim, discover what happens right? Exploration in essence. And so we, what we ideally want to do as people who care about science and who actually care about seeing progress in the gym is we want to marry those two concepts. We want to marry good science and we want to marry, uh, you know, experiential science, which is basically just a stupid way, uh, a stupid term that I just made up to suggest like paying attention to your own experience. That is science. Science is basically testing, retesting, analyzing results, right? Um, changing what you do to basically uh, optimize for that result over time. And this is what bodybuilders have been doing forever and ever and ever. They have been testing a hypothesis, analyzing the results of that hypothesis, and then basically adjusting their training moving forward. So now is where I get to the part of the video where I suggest people who I would personally um, take seriously in this space, because there are certain people who I think are um, very, very good at appearing as if they are not a part of this like pseudoscience based movement who actually are deeply embedded in it. And I just want to uh, name some specific names, people that I personally trust and take seriously in this space, people who I consider to be um, thoughtful, humble, not overly, uh, th these are people who don't overestimate their own abilities. These are people who I think in what I've seen of their content have demonstrated to me that they're committed to the goal of actual science and that they are not obsessed with the concept of a click or a like or a view or a follow. Um, so hopefully all that was clear. I think I touched on everything. Okay, so I mentioned some of these names before. I'll mention them again. Um, these are just a couple of names that come to mind. I'm sure that I'm going to forget certain people. I'm going to forget certain names, but just the top of mind ones 
I'll start with someone who I've mentioned many times before, Eric Helms. Eric Helms has been in this space, um, you know, longer than most people have been training. Um, and he has been, I think, someone who has spearheaded this sort of science-based campaign in a way that it ideally should be exemplified. Eric is someone who puts his money where his mouth is. I mean, for those of you who don't know, Eric was someone who literally did a, like um, a case study on himself uh, by stretching his calves for like several hours a day, just like the person who is obviously as committed as anyone could be to muscle growth, but who also understands limitations of science has been critical of how um, science communicators have been speaking to their general audiences, so on and so forth. So um, Eric Helms and the 3DMJ team, I think they're a great resource. Um, Alberto Nunez is also sort of a part of that team that still, I think, and there are some other folks in there who are likely worth uh, paying attention to. Um, in addition, Oh, and Eric's podcast, by the way, is great. Uh, it's called Iron Culture, uh, and where he and his buddy, uh, Eric Trexler, shout out to Eric Trexler, I think uh, make fantastic um, content. They have great conversations. They have good guests on. They do not softball questions. Um, they have good conversations, uh, uh, good challenges, good back and forths. So Iron Culture is a podcast I would take seriously. And Eric is both of those Eric's I would take seriously. Um, another name would be Cass Hansen, Cassim Hansen. Many of you know, probably if you're into biomechanics, who that is. Cass, especially over the last few years, has done an incredible job at improving his communication skills and improving the way that he uh, translates information from research. This is a dude, by the way, who will spend hours and hours and hours digging into um, single citations so that he can make things clear for people. He does a lot of the work that I am not willing or interested in doing. So Cass, shout out to you. Cass has taught me an unbelievable amount about a, a very, very wide range of things, biomechanics first and foremost. So Cass Hansen and N1 Education, 100% give them a follow. Uh, Cass is someone who I would take very seriously if I were you. Um, if you have a little bit of a sensitivity to people being straightforward and blunt about, you know, uh, just arguments related to empirical topics, um, you might not want to get into, <laughs> into a discussion with Cass um, because he will be blunt and that is why I appreciate him. So shout out to Cassim. Um, in the YouTube space, I think GVS, people say Jeffrey, some people say Joffrey. I think I'll just say GVS. I think GVS does a great job in his videos of um, actually thinking for himself and actually um, understanding, I think, enough of the, the body of scientific literature and uh, considering enough of, of the, the, so the sort of practical things in training. He's clearly jacked. He's clearly made lots of progress. And I think he has very um, uh, well thought through opinions. Again, and just to make it super clear, none of me, none of these suggestions, none of me suggesting these people to you all um, is to suggest that I agree with these people on everything. I think part of the reason I'm interested in listening to these people is because specifically I don't agree with them on everything. And that's actually how you know you get better at thinking, learning, et cetera. So GVS, I would take seriously. Faz Lifts, F-A-Z Lifts, um, I would take seriously. He is a dude who I discovered a couple months ago. I don't know if it's FAS or phase or what is it? some combination. Um, sorry, um, my friend, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that, but he has a YouTube channel. He makes videos that are sort of similar to the style, um, tone approach as GVS. Again, not that I agree with everything in all his videos, just to make that um, super, super clear, but I do appreciate his content. I think he's uh, obviously someone who's made lots of progress, who um, uh, works and has worked with real people, uh, which is something that I think is becoming rarer and, and rarer in this space. And I think that he is someone who um, thinks for himself, comes to his own conclusions and uh, creates um, uh, a clear display of critical thinking that not many other um, fitness influencers and, and people on YouTube and Instagram um, tend to. So um, those are just a, a couple of the first ones that come to mind. Those are resources that I would dig into. And then obviously, if you're watching this video still and you've been watching me, um, I think I do a halfway decent job of covering these topics. Though, as many of you have probably observed, I'm actually not and have never been as particularly interested in like becoming a research bro in the sense that like I could I could give two shits about research to be super blunt with you. Um, what I basically have decided 
is interesting to me. I mean, I didn't decide. I just find things interesting or, or, or I don't. Um, I, I don't find research particularly interesting for the same reason I don't find nutrition particularly interesting, which is that, or which is because of the fact that for whatever collection of reasons, I just, I'm so much more interested in like applying the basic physics to muscle, which is why I spend so much time with my buddy Frank in, in, in the rubber bands back there which uh, you don't have to take seriously, but um, I, I, I take it seriously because it's one of the only things that is just super sticky and concrete to me. Um, sifting through research, I hate the idea of it, right? Whether it's nutrition, whether it's uh, even exercise uh, science, right? Um, to understand and be able to dissect research is an entirely separate skill that most people are not even aware of is a skill, right? Like most people think that like reading a research paper, um, a meta-analysis, a single study on PubMed is like the same as picking up a, a book of nonfiction and just reading the book of nonfiction. You are, you are poorly mistaken if that is your impression. And so um, uh, to be scientifically literate is not to be able to read a conclusion in an abstract and to copy paste it onto something you're writing or a video you're making, uh, to be scientifically literate is actually to be able to understand statistics, to be able to understand effect sizes, to be able to understand. And, and me just listing those terms, it makes it sound like I know what I'm talking about. I have no fucking clue what I'm talking about. When I say statistics, when I say effect, like so many people say these words and they're like, and, and, and there's this sort of like veneer of knowledge, veneer of expertise. No, no, no. There's none of that right here. Okay. So when I am, um, uh, dissecting research, I'm basically trusting the opinions of people who are actually involved in research to be able to tell me what their research was about and what their research concluded based on um, their experience and their understanding of the topic. And so for any of you who feel qualified to dissect research who have not actually spent time in real institutions, um, I would just maybe just pull pull back a little bit on that and try to gain some perspective on what it would actually take to understand these things at a super, super um, deep level. Um, someone like Cass, Cass Hansen, someone like Eric Helms, those two people I mentioned earlier, they have real researchers on their podcast, people who are actually doing the research, people who are actually involved in understanding these things. And those are people, um, there was a couple podcasts that came out recently with, um, I'm forgetting the name of the guy, um, but Cass had him on recently. If you check out the N1 Education YouTube, that was a great conversation and many of you can learn a lot from that specific conversation. So anyway, enough of a ramble, but um, I hope all of that made sense. The solution to bad communication is not different bad communication. The solution to bad communication is good communication. And the value of science remains the same regardless of what your subjective experience is with science-based lifting or whatever we're calling it now. Um, again, trust in the, uh, the, the, the people who seem to understand these topics and seem to actually apply these topics, not the people who are doing it for likes, clicks, and views. As always, let me know what all of you think of this. Uh, and if you're interested, my live mentorship starts in maybe two weeks now, um, and it's still running on early bird pricing. So if you're interested in learning from me directly, check out the link in the description below. And again, please let me know your opinions below. I'll see you on the next one.